I joined my bro- Are you filming me? Good. Hello, my name is Grace and I was recently asked what are seven things I would say to my seventh grade self. So without further ado, number one, God loves you. And that seems really obvious, but it's something that can be really hard to take to heart because you think like, oh, God sees everything. He sees my good things, but he also sees my faults and my sins and my flaws. So how can he love me in spite of that? Um, I think that God really sees that as like, the sins as dirt coming, covering treasure. You don't look at a field full of treasure and say, oh, that treasure is not worth anything. It's covered in dirt. No, you say, wow, there's a treasure in that field. I'm going to get all the dirt off and I'm going to clean this treasure and I'm going to treasure my treasure. <laughs> um, and also he, I mean, he died on the cross for you. If you were the only person left in the entire world and he had to do it all over again, he would still do it just for you because that's how much he loves you, which is pretty cool. Number two, you is beautiful. Um, stop comparing yourself to other people's beauty because that's like comparing the beauty of a mountain to the beauty of the ocean. They're both beautiful. They look completely different and yet they're both beautiful. And you were made in the image and likeness of God, which means you literally look like your dad. So when you're saying I'm not beautiful, you're also saying that he isn't because you look like him. So literally, factually speaking, you can't not be beautiful. Number three, joy is not self-generated. Um, everyone wants to be joyful because, I mean, <laughs> you want to be happy, but also to be appealing to others or whatever. Um, but you can get trapped in the mindset of thinking that joy comes from yourself, which it doesn't because true joy <laughs> comes from God alone and um, nothing else is going to give you joy. So the only way that you are going to have joy is if you choose God, choose joy every single day. And just like everything else you choose, if you choose it often enough and you choose it regularly and you choose him every day, then that choice becomes a habit. So choose God, choose joy. doesn't come from you. Number four, what voices are you listening to? We live in a culture where we are surrounded by voices, surrounded by voices on the media, surrounded by voices um, on television, on from our family, from our friends, from our classmates, from our teachers. And all of these voices are saying something about us. And there are two really categories that a voice will be in. It'll either be a voice of truth that will give life or a voice that's a lie that will give death. And every single voice is saying something about you. And the words that we listen to have the power literally if we choose to forge our identity. So if you're constantly listening to a voice that's saying you're ugly, you're disgusting, you're not worthy, then that's what's going to become your identity. You're going to say, oh, wow, I'm ugly, I'm disgusting, I'm not worthy. So the only true infallible voice that will always speak truth in life about you is God's voice. So listen to God's voice, which leads to number 4.1. What are you giving voice to? Again, there's a voice of life and a voice of death, and only you have the power to choose which voice you're doing. And this voice has power over people's identities if they choose to. And not only what are you speaking over others, but what are you speaking over yourself? Are you being a voice of life or being a voice of death? Number five, be yourself, please. Be yourself because God gave you and only you unique quirks and talents and a personality. And only you can be you. So when you deny to be yourself, to maybe withhold a certain aspect of your personality or something because you're afraid of how people will react to it, then you're denying one of God's greatest gifts to the world, which is you. Like St. Kevin of Siena said, be who you were meant to be and you will set the world on fire. You can only do that if you are fulfilling your identity, if you are being yourself. Number six, 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 six. Mary is not that stereotypical demanding mother-in-law who you have to endure for the sake of her son. Um, trust me, there are many, many more reasons to pray the rosary and honor and love Mary than fear of being struck dead by lightning or fire or, I don't know, a trampede of cows, <laughs> whatever. Um, 
when Jesus was dying on the cross and he said to his disciple, behold thy mother and to Mary, behold thy son, Mary took all of humanity into her heart. And she loves us truly as a mother would with pure love that only wants what's best for us and that's most gentle and most loving and most caring. And there are so many graces that she's longing to give you, but you have to ask for them and you have to be open to receiving them. So yeah, Mary's really awesome. Number seven, last but certainly not least, because this is the most important, there is a God-sized hole in your heart. God made you for him, and there's a space in your heart that only he can fill. So when you're trying to shove it with everything else, with friendships or social media or um, fashions or games or whatever you're trying to fill it with, it's just going to leave you feeling more empty because the more that you're trying to shove these things into your heart, the more that you're going to realize that they don't fit. And the only thing that fits is God. So choose God, accept him every single day into your heart. And this has been seven things I would say to my seventh grade self with my 10th grade self, Grace Schleter. Signing off. Another day, another destiny. Are you ready? <laughs>